Welcome to another video. If you're a calculus student and you take calculus 2, this is one of the type of questions you are going to have to face, the length of a curve or the length of an arc. So we're not talking about the length of a straight line, but it's going to be a curve. As you can see, it is the square root function. Now, in another video, I'm going to show you how this formula was obtained. But in this formula, all you need to know is that you have to memorize the formula for the length of an arc, just the same way you memorize the formula for finding the length of a line using Pythagorean um, theorem. So it's the same thing we're going to do here. The length of any arc has a formula and it has some integration involved in it. Let's get into the video. Because the function we're given is written as y as a function of x, the formula you'll be using will be using dy dx. But sometimes you may need to rewrite the formula or rewrite the function so that you write it as x as a function of y and you'll be using dx dy. Okay? But in this case, it looks as if dy dx is going to work out for us. So that's what we're going to use as our formula. So this is the formula you're going to use. The only thing you need to know is dy dx. After knowing dy dx, come plug it in, simplify, and take the, um, the integral, the definite integral from the two boundaries, which are from 0 to 1. Now, let me allay your fears. Sometimes when you see the curve or the function, you think it's impossible to integrate. But the way these questions are designed, they're designed in such a way that if you properly do your algebra in simplifying the inside, the ultimate um, function that you need to integrate will be something very easy to integrate. So never get intimidated. It always works out fine. So let's go here. So for this case, what we have is, in our case, what do we have? We have um, a equals 0, b is equal to 1, okay? And the only thing we need is dy dx. What is dy dx? Well, we have to use the chain rule. And by the way, if you pay attention to this again, you can tell that this is a part of a circle. You try squaring both sides. You're going to get y squared equals 2 minus x squared. Move the x squared to the other side. You'll end up with x squared plus y squared is equal to 2. Look, the square root of 2 squared. So this is actually a circle centered at 0, 0, the origin, with radius square root of 2. So when we're done, we can always test whether our answer is correct because we can tell how much of the circumference of the circle we have. So we're going to come back to this. So here, we're going to say that dy dx Look, what's the y dx for this kind of function? You have to apply the chain rule. Firstly, we have to deal with the square root sign, 1 half of 2 minus x squared raised to negative 1 half, multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. So we can say that dy dx, in this case, is going to be, well, this half will cancel this 2. Um, and we're going to have, oh, the derivative is negative 2 multiplied by the derivative of negative of 2 minus x squared is negative 2x. So what we have is negative 2x. Let's rewrite this. By the way, if you're taking calculus 2, I shouldn't be explaining how to take dy dx of this one. dy dx is the chain rule, and this is what happens. Okay, so now we've gotten everything we need. We just need to plug it into this formula and find the length of the arc. Okay, so like I said before, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at a circle going from, see the radius is square root of 2. So we're going to go from square root of 2 to 1. Something like this. This is 1. Okay, and how long is this? That's all we're looking for. Okay, and if you can approximate very well, this looks like, so the whole thing is 
one, two, three, four. Then we divide this into two. It's like you, like it's one eighth of a circle, like one over eight of the entire circle. Okay, of what's the per, 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 perimeter of a circle? Pi r, two pi r. Oh, something like this. So we're gonna get pi r over four. It looks like it's gonna be pi r over four. Well, we're gonna check that out, okay, at the end of the day. But let's go back here. Let's box this, because I don't want it to be a distraction. So now, or somewhere around pi r over four, something close to that, okay? Now, this is what we have, dy dx. Let's go use it in our formula. So here we have the length of this arc is equal to the integral from zero to one of the square root of one plus dy dx squared. So we're gonna square this guy. So it's gonna be negative x over square root of two minus x squared, everything squared. Then we have dx on the outside. This is the same thing as the integral from zero to one of the square root of, if we square this guy, we're gonna end up with one plus this minus will disappear, so we have x squared over, and this square root sign is gonna disappear, so you have two minus x squared. Ah, you see, I told you it always simplifies into something nice. Now, what happens here? If we make this a common fraction, see what's gonna happen. This will come here, you have two minus x squared plus x squared divided by two minus x squared. So this will take this out. You end up with only two over two minus x squared. Nice, dx. I'm gonna give the square root to the top and the bottom so that on top, I'm gonna to have square root of two and under, I'm going to have square root of two minus x squared. And the square root of two I have here, I'm gonna move it all the way. I can leave it there actually. So let's do it this way, zero over one. Then I have the square root of two over the square root of two minus x squared dx. Okay, so I need to make this guy one so that I can apply my easy substitution. I like to do that. I wanna do one minus sine squared theta because I'm gonna replace whatever is here with sine, sine theta so that I'm gonna rewrite this as the integral from zero to one of the square root of two divided by, I'm gonna write this as two into one minus x squared over two. You see, if I redistribute this two, it's gonna change this back to two and it's gonna cancel this so it becomes this. So that's what you call factoring. Factoring means you're dividing each of the terms by what you're taking out. So I took out two, it means I've divided this by two, I got one, I've divided this by two, I've gotten x squared over two. So this is the current position. But now you see that what I have here is basically the square root of two. So I can take it out and write this as the square root of two times the square root, watch, nice, of one minus this. And this square root of two can cancel out the square root of two so that what I have left in my next movement is gonna be just the integral from zero to one of, this cancels this, all I have left is one over the square root of one minus, now I'm gonna write this as x over square root of two squared, x over square root of two, all squared. Now I'm ready. Okay, now this is where life becomes very juicy because I can replace this now, x over square root of two, I'm gonna replace it with sine theta. Just watch all the drama that's gonna happen now. So I'm gonna say, let x over square root of two be equal to sine theta. And this implies that x is equal to square root of two sine theta. 
So I'm going to differentiate both sides because now I'm trying to replace this dx. I've moved from the x world into the theta world now. So what I'm doing is instead of integrating with respect to x, I'm now going to be integrating with respect to theta. So I need to change this dx. That's my mission. So now, what is dx? If I differentiate this, I'm going to get dx. If I differentiate this, I'm going to get square root of 2. But the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta d theta. Don't forget this d could have come here. I could have said dx d theta, right? Okay, but instead of saying dx d theta, I just found the um, differential, okay? So this is what you call the differential of the function. So here, square root of 2 cosine theta d theta is what I have, and I'm going to use this to replace dx. So there's no more x in this function. And whatever x you see here, remember we've replaced this guy with sine theta. So what you have now on top here becomes, this is now equal to the integral from zero to one of one over the square root of one minus sine squared theta because this is sine theta squared. That's it. Multiplied by, what is this again? We said dx is now square root of 2 cosine theta d theta. Okay, this is, but, oh, no, 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 there's a problem. The problem is, because I have gone away from the x world into the theta world, I can no longer use the x coordinates that I started with. It has to change to theta, right? So let's do some of the conversion here. Again, we can say theta is arc sine. I know some people don't like me writing this, but this is how I like writing it, x over square root of two. Okay, so watch this. When x is equal to zero, this is zero over square root of two, so this becomes zero. What is arc sine zero? That's what theta is. Arc sine zero is zero. So this zero stays, because now this is in terms of theta. Theta will be zero when x equals zero. But what's gonna happen when x is equal to one? If we change this number here to one, then what is theta? Arc sine one over rad two, if you remember your trig very well and your unit circle, you will notice that this is going to be pi over 4. So this guy here becomes pi over 4. That's the only thing we need to change. That's pi over 4. Everything else is cool and normal. Let me quickly clean something up again. Look at 1 minus sine squared theta. What is 1 minus sine squared theta? It is cosine squared theta. So this is cosine squared theta. But what is the square root of cosine squared theta? It's cosine theta. Oh, wait, but cosine theta will cancel this cosine theta. You see, I told you it always resolves nicely. So this guy takes this guy out. And guess what we have left? What we have is just the integral from zero to pi over four of what is left, only this guy is left, square root of two, d theta. This is a constant. If you take the integral of this one, you're gonna end up with square root of two theta, evaluated from zero to pi over four. Plug in pi over four, you get square root of two times pi over four. Plug in zero, you get nothing. You get zero, not nothing. <laughs> I've been warned to not say zero is nothing. Zero is something. What do you get here? You're gonna end up with the square root of two multiplied by pi over four minus zero. And your answer is going to be square root of two over four pi. And I think it, matches what we said before. The radius is square root of two. 
square root of 2 over 4 pi. So it is about one eighth of the length of the perimeter of a circle. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye bye.